the Goes of Family. Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hopefully you guys are having a great and exceptional day. You know, it's Thursday, so we're almost at the end of the road for the week. But, you know, it doesn't mean doesn't mean we still can't make money moves on the weekend. You know what I mean, family? Um, today's word of the day is capacity, which stands for the maximum amount that something can contain the or the amount that something can produce and whatnot. And I chose this word today because... Um, a lot of times people think that they've reached, especially when people, you know, as we get older, people think that they've peaked in life. And a lot of times I say this with all sincerity, age is nothing but a number. I say that because I've met the most um, unmature, immature people in my life that are older than me. And I've met some of the most mature people that are younger than me. So it's just all about your perspective, how you're brought up and how you want to even just look at life and whatnot. You know, it's all about perspective. Uh, but, but a lot of people don't think that they've peaked until the day they die. And I love those kind of people because I don't think we should, anyone should ever put, especially in today's world, put a limit on their life to where they, where they are and where they can go and whatnot. So like I said, it's not the 1960s, 70s, and 80s anymore. The, the thinking and living outside of the box culture is alive and well, and it's ever evolving every single day. So I don't know why anybody would want to reach a reach a capacity just because they, you know, especially the old school way of, oh, I got a degree, so... And, I am, I'm in, and I'm in my career, I've reached my capacity. I'm married, I have children, I have a degree, I have a career, I've reached my capacity. And that's great. You know, focus on those things that matter, but there's other things that you can focus on all at the same time so that you learn that the only, because at the end of the day, I remember Swiss Beat said this, sky's not the limit, it's only the view. So it's just all how you look at things and look at the world and whatnot. So if you if your view is only here, even though you can go here, but if this is it, then don't complain about the results that you get at the end of the day. If this is all you're willing to, only effort you're willing to put in, that's what and I always say. This the basic people just want to put in the minimal amount of effort, but will complain and complain and complain about things not going their way and whatnot. So, or them not getting more out of what they put into. Well, it's all about what you. Majority of the time, it's what you put in is what you get out. That's just what it is at the end of the day. What you put in is what you get out. If you're not putting your light in, if you're not taking the risk, then there's no risk, no reward, period. You know, I can't put it any other way. I mean, great example, you see the satellite orbiting around me. Um, people know when they orbit these satellites into the sky, you know, think of Elon Musk doing something to that effect, you know, with SpaceX. They know that when they're orbiting these things into the sky, I mean, into the sky, into space and whatnot, Nine times out of ten, that's not it, it's going out there permanently and whatnot, and within hopes that it actually works. That's why they probably most likely send out a multitude of these different satellites because they know eventually one will go down and become space junk. I can just imagine what the amount of junk that's even floating around space nowadays. But yeah, space space junk and whatnot. But the these specific um, satellites orbiting the Earth, and they they. They, they, they don't have a limit. They don't have a, they just have a specific view that they're going to look to, look at the earth, the moon, the stars, the et cetera, and so forth. And we all have to have that mentality that when we orbit our lives, when we get up every day, we have a chance to orbit into various different areas in the various different ways. But are we going to make the choices that matter in order for us to continuously orbit so that we can see things and do things that we never think, thought that we could ever do with our lives? You know, that's just a question that I can't answer, only you can answer. All right. And speaking of people who constantly orbit, even to this day, you know, given the fact that he's I believe he's almost in his 80s, Warren Buffett, uh, he stated it's better to hang out with people better than you. Pick out associates whose behavior is better than yours and you'll drift in that direction. And I couldn't agree with that statement more because um, there's a lot of people I grew up with that, you know, were good people on all different levels. But we had to um, separate and part ways because we were going in different directions in life. Um, and in me, I like hanging out with people and associating with people that I can learn from and hopefully that they can learn from me. Um, because I want, I want every day for me, myself to be better from a mental standpoint, from a physical standpoint, I want us all to be better and whatnot. And if we're always talking about, especially, um, the, the downside, a lot of times when you hang out with people that you grew up with, not all the times, but in certain instances, 
They always just want to talk about the past and what happened 20, 30 years ago. I'm not living in 20, 30 years ago. I'm living in now. So what's happening now matters more than what happened 10 to 20 years ago and whatnot. You know, I look at the past and look at the view of your mirrors. It's like driving. Okay, some, some of it was good, some of it was bad, but let's move forward. What, what can we learn from the past? Yeah, we had some good times, but that's just what it is. And then um, speaking of which, there's actually a new book. I actually started reading. I got this off of Eli Wild University. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Poor Charlie's Almanac. Yeah, it's, of course it wants to fade away. Yeah, but Poor Charlie's Almanac. And actually, the gentleman, because um, it's the wit and the wisdom of Charles T. Munger. And because this was actually forwarded by Warren Buffett. And the, the amazing thing about this book, I just started reading this. You know, it's one of those big, huge, heavy books. You know, like I said, I'm going old school with this book. But anyways, one of the things is, is that this gentleman was kind of a, a mentor for Warren Buffett. And him hanging out with a gentleman like um, uh, Charlie, he was actually able to learn and take so much great wisdom and whatnot from him. And we can all do that from people that are our age, are younger than us, older than us. There's so much we can learn. I've learned, I learned from people of all ages, and I love that. And um, and that's one thing, Warren Buffett, I give him much credit and love and respect. I mean, heck, I remember one time seeing LeBron James playing golf for Warren Buffett because he was trying to soak up the knowledge in the game from Warren Buffett in order for him to be successful because he's not going to be able to play basketball forever. Same thing with Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson linked up and got a lot of uh, game and wisdom from one of the Lakers, uh, own, the owner of the Lakers at the time when he first um, became a Laker and whatnot, when he first went to Los Angeles. And the, the owner of the team was like, okay, I really usually don't associate with uh, dumb athletes. Said these words, quote unquote, so I'll give you a shot. And, you know, it was back in back in the day. So he threw him um, Wall, the Wall Street Journal and he said, memorize this. It was an article from the Wall Street Journal. He gave him X amount of time to memorize it. And then he says, um, come back to me in X amount of time and present it to me, and then I'll give you a shot. And he did. So the work was put in. So Magic Johnson has his empire today because of the work that was put in. LeBron James has his empire because of the work that was put in. Warren Buffett has his empire because of the work that was put in. Work, work, work. That's really what it really boils down to at the end of the day. So on that note, family, do the great three free things. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the online store, Larry. It's anything Ghost sells a variety of products. If you're a crypto investor, join the Ghost Standard Partners. We will be going live in the next hour on YouTube and Facebook. So we'll be talking about 22 uh, side gigs that you can get into within today's economy so that you can continue to make money moves and not live broke like a fool. And on that note, family, I will see you guys later. Take care.